Hey everyone, it's Joanna here from Inspired by Stamping. Today we're going to share this Poppy watercolor card using our distress markers. We're going to color this beautiful image and add this sentiment and then we're going to add a couple little foam dimensionals to the top and it's going to have a beautiful simple card. But first we're going to lay out all our supplies and I've already laid them out. What you'll need is your Poppy stamp set. This is our new release. We're going to use this nice big image and this beautiful sentiment right here. We've already stamped them on or put them up on our blocks. So you'll need your blocks. And I also have a great tutorial on how to prep your new stamp set. So I'll leave a link for you. And what we're going to need is I already cut this piece of paper. It's 11 by 4 and a quarter here. And then going down to the middle and it's five and a half right here and it's just a beautiful different way of making a card and here's my watercolor card I've already cut that out and I'm using this Keenson watercolor paper it's the best for the distress markers here in Australia so I'll be looking for any form of brands that I can find you'll need barn door black soot fire brick peeled paint and also Shabby Shutters Distress Ink. And don't forget, you're gonna need your water. And also, we've got a couple brushes. I'm using a number four and a number two here. And a number two. And I'm also gonna use some paper towel like always. And I forgot to mention that this cardstock is cut by three and three quarters by five. So let's get stamping. Okay, we're back. So let me just zoom in here and get set up. Try to make sure that we're right smack center into the middle of my video camera here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our Distress Ink and I'm using Antique Linen today. And as I always love to stamp, I always lay my block down and then I flip the ink over and I ink up. And this just allows the ink to be nice and super even so you just create the most beautiful images that way. Now if you have any problems with your blocks, always clean them because sometimes they get bubbles and dirt and stuff and then you'll have uneven uh, stamping and it's really not the stamp sometimes. Sometimes it is actually the acrylic block that's dirty so just give them a wipe with some Windex or some little bit of soap and water and dry them and it'll be beautiful again. And there's our image all ready to be colored with um, our distress markers. And always make sure that the ink dries. It's so important that your Distress Ink has completely dried. If it doesn't uh, dry, then it will run into your Distress Markers and you will create all sorts of different colors that you didn't want. <laughs> so let's get started with our coloring now that the ink has officially dried. Some people like to lay their um, watercolor paper up on a little ink block like this. I prefer to do it flat. I also use my easel a lot, but I thought I would just kind of share with you a different way. Uh, I am going to lay this back down flat because that's what I prefer and it's better for you to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my barn door and my fire brick. Now the fire brick will go closest in. That's the darkest ink. And then I'm going to lay the ink over the um, barn door just over. It's my lighter ink and that will go on top. So here I am. I'm laying down the fire brick and I'm, wor I'm working where those layers are too in the stamp set that you can see. I've When I created these stamps I made sure that the lines were available so you could see where to put the darker for when you do color. So now we're just going to add our water. Wipe it off. Always wipe off first your excess water off your brush. And then we're just going to move that ink and I usually start like this with around the edges and then I just start using the brush strokes. The key to making this beautiful is always use your brush in the direction that you see that the flower petals are going. So as you can see, they're going straight down. So my brush strokes are going straight down to create little lines and it looks a little bit more beautiful. And when it dries, you can see those little lines when you're watercoloring. Here I am just kind of wiping off again. Now, while this little petal is drying, we want to start off in a different area because we don't want it to bleed into each other and then everything is going to get messy. So while that little petal is drying, we're going to color on a different piece of 
of our flower. So right now I'm going to do the top and I'm just going to color that in and move around that ink again. And just move it around. I usually just do it, um, get those edges really well first and then I'll start doing the brush strokes and moving that heavier ink. See how I'm brushing up? And that's just pulling that ink upwards in the direction that I believe that the flower is going when you look at flower petals. Okay, I'm just going to turn on a little bit of music on right now and you guys can watch how I paint, starting always with the darkest in the inside and working my way out. I hope that you enjoy this.
Okay, I'm just gonna finish my little touches up. Usually when, after my watercolor dries, I like to go over the little lines where I've highlighted them on the stamp set and just create a little bit more form. And you can see here, you just go over a little bit just to make it a little bit more darker or you can leave it really pale, it's really up to you. And I'm just gonna spread that ink again just around kind of going over the whole entire area. You want to go over the whole area or it's going to show that you actually stopped your color and you're going to have little watercolor lines. So you want to make sure you do the whole entire petal. And I'm just going to go over it again, just spreading that ink. And this just makes it nice and dark. I just really love the vibrancy of the two colors together, the fired brick and the barn door. And I just think they're really just beautiful and majestic. And just going over and I think it just makes the flower just pop just that much more. What do you think? And always making sure that those brush strokes are going in the direction that you want your petal to be going into. You don't want to be going in a different direction or your lines won't be perfect. Okay, so while this dries, we're going to start into our leaves and we're going to do our center. And so what we're going to do with the center is we're just going to add just a little, little drop because we want this to be very, very light black. You could use your gray, but I wanted to use a minimal amount of um, markers uh, for this tutorial so that you didn't have to go out and buy a whole bunch. And so just kind of spread that ink going in a circular motion and making sure that the center is the darkest. And I actually just picked up a little bit more ink with my number two because I thought it was a bit too dark. So make sure that that light, um, that center is very light. And now we're going to go through with some peeled paint. This is the darker. And this is where our darker lines are going to go for our stems. And we're just going to draw a line right along the ink on the stamp set. And then we're going to go over it with the lighter one, which is our shabby shutters. And we're just going to go directly near it and some of it on top of it. And I just love the two colors. I think that they're very, very beautiful together. And we're just going to use our smaller brush this time because the stems are a bit smaller. So we're just going to use a number two, rinse that off, make sure it's nice and clean. And we're just going to move that ink just lightly, just spreading it out. And that just creates a beautiful highlighted image. And we're going to do this for all the stems. Okay, so now that we're done with the stems for a little bit, I want to make sure that they dry before we start going over this little area. So we want to make sure our stems are completely dry before we start touching our stems. And if you're really careful and you're you know not afraid of kind of coming close to the stems, go for it. You might not have any um, running. So now we're just going to do the center of our poppy and lightly you can see uh, the beautiful details that it is. We're going to use this fine tip for it and we're just going to just pencil in those little dots. You can see them actually through the red. You might need to have a little bit of a higher light to see but you can see them through and you just draw them in and if you want you can just look at the stamp set too in itself and just kind of copy what the stamp set has. 
I've also had people who have used the markers to set their ink first. So I have had people who have colored the center black and stamped that way too so you could still see it. And that's just a different way of doing it. This is the way that I like. So um, you can do it that way too. That would be great. So I'm just penciling in again and just highlighting the circle, making it a bit darker. And then after that, because the center is now dry from our watercolor, um, the ink won't run and everything's completely dry. And then we'll finish the rest of our stems down below because those should be dry by the time that we get to, um, to it again. Okay, so we'll just finish up this little area. Yep, we're just going to do this little area right there, the little bulb. We're just going to start with the peeled paint again, making sure that the dark is always on the same side as the stems. All the dark images um, are on that side. And then we're just going to go over it again with some shabby shutters. And I noticed that I didn't put the dots in for the bulb that they're on in the stamp set. And you can go back over with the peeled paint and make those dots a bit darker if you prefer. I just left everything really, really light this time. Um, it was just my choice. I just liked it that way, very soft. But you can go ahead and do that again. And I'm just going to finish up the last couple little stems right here because everything's dry now. I just grab my watercolor brush and I'm just going to just move that ink very, very slightly. And then we'll be ready to put our card, our stamp, our thinking about you actually. That will be our next step. Because everything is pretty much dry now. Okay, now we're all complete. The one on the left, I used more fire brick distress marker ink, and the one on the right, I used more barn door. I love them both. I think they both turned out pretty well. Okay, now we get to fun part. We get to put it back together. We're going to use some momentum black ink, and we're going to stamp right on that edge in the bottom. And as always, I ink up this way, all my stamp sets, large, small, all of them, I just think that um, it's evenly inked up that way. And now I'm just going to stamp on that corner. Let me just line this up. I always make sure that my um, picture that I'm working with or my is absolutely square and then I stamp on it. I find that that works best for me. And now we're going to put everything together. Right, we'll grab our piece of paper and we're just going to fold it in half. Just making sure, pressing it down and just kind of making sure we've got a really beautiful crease. Next, we're going to take our foam dimensionals. Just grab them here and we're just going to place four dimensionals on each corner. And one right here and one on the bottom. Oh, and one more and we'll just take the pieces of paper off and then we'll line it up and then there you have it press down on each corner make sure it's nice and sticky well, I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope that you're inspired to watercolor something with distress markers. Um, leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you hear about our new online classes feature that's going to be a bi-weekly thing. So thanks so much for joining me. Take care, guys. See ya.